everyone. I'm Dr. Nancy Snyderman, and we begin today with those new attacks from the GOP on health care reform. Today, RNC Chairman Michael Steele is out with an op-ed piece in the Washington Post with what he calls a seniors bill, uh, seniors health care bill of rights. Let's get right to it and bring in Democratic Congressman Anthony Weiner of New York and John Botha, the Executive Vice President for Policy for AARP. Gentlemen, thank you as always. Representative Weiner, you have been out in front talking about what you say are the truths around real health care reform. Let's take apart what Michael Steele has said. He uh, really sort of counts down five things. He uh, says that we have to prevent Medicare cuts. Uh, allow seniors to control their decisions, ban what he is calling rationing, keeping government out of end-of-life care, which obviously, as we know, goes to reimbursing physicians to have those conversations, and preserving benefit programs for veterans. Is there any meat in what he's throwing out there? Well, this is great. I mean, I have never seen such a vigorous defense of a single-payer health care plan as I heard today from the Republicans. They love Medicare. They love a government-funded, government-administered health care plan that has a very low overhead. You know, in fact, I wish that his Republican friends were this in love with Medicare as he is. For example, he says he doesn't want cuts in Medicare. Well, their own budgets over the course of the last five years cut trillions of dollars. Their budget this year, $300 billion of cuts and from Medicare. And doesn't everybody agree that there's some fat to be cut? A hundred percent. Look, even in the president's plan, and even I would say that we need to bend the, curse, the cost curve down. And one of the ways you do it is by every day trying to assess what works, what doesn't, what saves money. You know, we throw money at people to put people in hospital beds. We give them nothing to for in-home care. That's dumb on a financial level. It saves you money. Also, it's not compassionate care. It's dumb on an infection Look, level. 100%. You stay healthier at home. But I also think it's interesting that in they're tying themselves in knots trying to say things like, don't let the government come between the patient and their doctor. Well, I guess that's true in every case except for abortion and family planning. I guess then you want government in there. So the hypocrisy just drips from the document. But it sounds to me like they support a single-player national health care plan, which is what Medicare is. And I welcome them to that cause. John, the AARP has been out front early on um, weighing in on this debate, and it's cost you 60,000 people um, quitting the organization. What's your stance today, and how do you respond to what Michael Steele has said? Well, our stance has always been to support reforms that uh, give people a better value, that uh, address the dreaded uh, donut hole in the Medicare drug benefit and provide coverage for the millions of Americans who can't get it today because of pre-existing conditions or they can't afford it. So we are favoring uh, health reform in general. Uh, we're still looking at the actual legislative proposals and we have not seen anything in any of the House bills or the Senate bills that would do the things that uh, are alleged in this uh, op-ed. Uh, we certainly welcome uh, the goals he puts forward. There's nothing wrong with these goals. You know, John, I have to say, the times I've spoken with you before, you've always been very clear-cut about speaking the truth, but I've just been handed a statement that says the AARP is glad to have GOP on the side of older Americans. Doesn't that just feed into the fact that there are a lot of mistruths in Michael Steele's op-ed piece? We don't agree at all with this characterization of what's actually been proposed in legislation. We do not see anything that would put the government in between a person uh, and their doctor, for example. Uh, so uh, what the statement is, we're glad that and finally we're seeing some affirmative principles, some affirmative goals uh, coming from the head of the Republican Party. Do you think that, look, I, I agree with John. You know, ARP is in a difficult situation here because they have on one side people just making stuff up that impacts seniors very intimately, and they have to spend a lot of their time defending against it. And, and you're right. They were reiterated a lot of points here in Mr. Steele's op-ed. But the fact is that, you know, the Republicans up to now have been, you know, playing out the old adage that it takes a great man to build a barn, but any jackass can kick it down. You know, the, the Democrats have been, the president's not going as far as I would like, but has a plan out there, and the Republicans don't have one. But this document does say something very interesting about the mindset of Republicans. They want to protect Medicare. They know that. So they've got to argue somehow that a government-run plan that they really desperately say they want to uh, protect, although for 44 years they've been criticizing right. it, somehow we can't add to it or can't replicate it or can't have it made better. I think it's a very difficult spot the Republicans are in, but it shows up their hypocrisy here. And speaking of hypocrisy, there's a little bit of videotape I'd like to roll, and then I'd like to get your response. 
The beach is nice this time of year. But while President Obama vacations, concerns mount about his health care plan. Why? Because his public option health plan could lead to government-run health care, higher taxes on everything from paychecks to soda, and add a trillion to the deficit. Heather Higgins, who represents the Independent Women's Forum, has joined us on set. This, um, I can't call it a public service announcement, I think it's an ad sort of blasting the fact that the president is on holiday. Why? I can't speak to that. What did you think, Representative Weiner? I think that, though, that if anything, there's, there was certainly always criticism of Bush whenever he was absent or not paying attention or, you know, off on a plane and in, at 9-11. So I think they're just turnabout fair play and politics as usual. And, and how do you defend Michael Steele's op-ed piece today? I think it's a very good piece. I don't think it needs defending. I think it stands on its own merits. I think there are huge problems with what's being proposed. And what is your biggest concern about what's being proposed? I think that my biggest yeah, concern your, about... Your biggest, biggest concern. Is that the, the fundamental underlying premise of the thing is that there ought to be some authoritarian elite that gets between you and your doctor and makes those decisions for you. And where is you. that written in there that an authoritarian elite will get in between? The 1,017 pages of... of Which you've read. I have read pieces of it. Have you it. read the whole thing? I have not read the whole thing, and you have not read the whole thing. No, I'm just asking you. I know, have and you read nobody it? actually has because, because I don't order the bills in the right. Senate. So, so, Very so, good. If you're, so, so you're creating a comparative effectiveness review board. You're creating an, a technology system, which is a single database to which there is access to where you don't control the privacy of your own medical records. The decision is no longer between the patient and their doctor and their own best judgment. There is going to be standards that are determined by I would by just others. like to hear where in the thousand-page document it's says those things because no one's pointed Actually, out. Actually, the Comparative Effectiveness Review Board was already passed in the stimulus legislation, and the uh, IT portion was already passed in the stimulus legislation. So you're against IT? I'm not against IT, but I think there are very different ways of doing IT. In financial markets, for example, we have lots of IT for records, but they, you have privacy protections of that. There's not a single government accessible database right, for I'd everything, like reader. nor is there a consultation with your financial advisor with the government giving them advice about what's appropriate or not. Actually, none of the stuff about IT that was just described is in the bill. It has a funding system that's set up, and it has a mechanism that sets up to try to get software and technology into the hands of doctors and to hospitals. One of the things that's very clear in the bill is that we frankly don't say there it's going to be the subject of separate legislation how the IT is going to be set up. But let me just point out because it was in the ad and it's come up here. You know there's a certain hypocrisy. You know to say that oh we're against government involvement. We do have government run programs that 40 percent of all health care. And in fact Mr. Steele in his op-ed and today in his principle says we have to vigorously defend the government's role in providing health care. But we can provide one more person or we can provide any changes to it because then it would be government-run health care. It's completely hypocrisy. Are you against Medicare or are you in favor of Medicare? Do you favor a single-run government-run pro program or are you opposed to it? They're debating themselves and just this weekend Orrin Hatch said he supports the many things that, the, that, that our other guests said that she's against. The Republicans are very good at being no on things and that's their strategy which is even more of an argument why Democrats have to do this ourselves. This when, it comes, when it comes to big important social change in this country, we do it without Republicans. We always have. We'll do it this time. You know, I'm glad that you feel that half the country can just be ignored. Well, but I just President wish... Obama took six months to pick his damn dog. I think we ought to be taking a little bit more time to think about 18% of the economy and how we structure how people get health care. Because I care about health care being affordable. I hear, care about it being high quality. I care about the fact that we've got far better survival rates here for any disease, particularly cancers, but a whole host of other diseases. We do recognize that our infant mortality rate is lousy. I recognize that our countries. infant mortality rate is lousy because many other countries don't even count births as live births until the baby is a drive for at least 24 hours driver. in Sweden or 28 gets. days. If the baby doesn't live for 28 days in Cuba, it doesn't even count. You want, you want to play games with statistics, that's a great way to do it. Well, then, you know, we, we make heroic efforts on children that no, that no other country would even try on. So, of course, we've got higher infant mortality. It's because we try harder on babies that nobody would try with at all. You know what? That's just not true. I can't, I can't let you end on that one. We're, we're 37th for a lot more reasons than we count live births differently. And one other thing before we leave, because we will continue this. If you want to talk about privacy, and I think we have to talk about privacy as we talk about information technology, once a unit clerk or a secretary holds your paper chart in a doctor's office, you already have privacy issues. So I think we have to reframe this to some sort of sanity to talk about privacy and how we move this forward. Because we have to move from a paper nation at some point. Representative Weiner, 
Heather Higgins. Thank you very much. And John Rother, always a pleasure. Thank you so much.